Hey friends, Andrew here, hope you're well. The mid-range category of phones is so fiercely competitive. It's not just simply about the price tag, it's about packing as many standout features as possible into the phone to win us over. So what happens when you blend a powerful camera, a uniquely intentional design, and an affordable price point in a phone? I think you get this phone here, and this phone is the Vivo V23 5G. And I've been using this phone now for the last few weeks as my daily driver, and right off the bat, for the price, this is a really nice phone, but there are two stellar features that stand out, its design and the camera. For transparency's sake, this video is sponsored by Vivo, but as always, all thoughts and opinions are my own. So let's start with the all important price. The suggested retail price is $459 US dollars. It's a mid-ranger phone and stands shoulder to shoulder with the likes of OnePlus 9 and Oppo Reno 7. It's a pretty competitive price point, so let's see how the Vivo V23 5G stacks up, what we get for the price, and why this may possibly be one of the best mid-ranger phones on the market right now. Inside the phone, a MediaTek Dimensity 920 chip powers Vivo's FunTouch OS 12, which is based on Android 12. If you're not familiar, it's essentially a polished version of Android 12. So if you're a fan of a simple, minimal operating system while still having the customization there, you'll appreciate FunTouch. But yeah, the Dimensity 920 chip is roughly on par to the Snapdragon 860, it hasn't faulted in the last few weeks. It supports 5G and has enough juice for smooth mobile gaming too. The V23 5G also features extended RAM 2.0 and fast charging. Decent specs for the price. Now, here's where it gets really interesting as a mid-range phone. It's camera and it's head-turning design. At first glance, its design isn't original. Its metal frame is very reminiscent of other phones out there. This isn't a bad thing necessarily, and it does have a nice sort of heft to it at 180 grams. But as soon as you get it out of the box and flip it around, you'll find its iconic color changing back panel. Yes, it literally changes color. The color changing glass back panel gradually changes color when exposed to sunlight and UV light. Vivo says there's a chemical change in the molecular structure when illuminated by a UV light. If it all sounds a little too scientific, it's essentially a gradient changing back panel that eventually fade back to its original shade when, for example, it's out of the sun. With the sunshine gold finish under certain lighting or under the sun, it fades from a light blue and pink orange type finish to an extremely beautiful blue green gradient. The gradient in color that I love, as most of you guys probably already know. If you're a bit more of a traditionalist, you're, you know, a bit more of a dark mode type person like I am, well, the V23 Pro here looks just as handsome in this sleek stardust black. And just a heads up, it doesn't come with the color changing fluorite on this black, but it has more of a shimmery matte black finish. I don't know, I kind of like both and which one would you pick from these two here? It's an extremely premium feel for the price point. In hand, it just doesn't feel like a mid-range $459 phone. If you gave me this phone without knowing anything else, and I just saw the phone at face value, I'd say the build quality is on par with high-end phones at double the price tag. One trade-off at this price point is that it doesn't have an IPX rating, so you want to keep this phone away from excessive dust or water. So that's the unique design. Now let's talk about the mobile photography on this phone because there is a lot of good stuff here. And I'm going to be sharing with you a lot of snaps I've taken over the last few weeks. Whether my photography is any good, I guess you'll be the judge here. The V23 5G features a triple rear camera setup. The focal point here is a really beefy 64 megapixel rear camera. That's a lot of pixels. And it's flanked by an eight megapixel camera and a neat macro camera too. But the true star of the show here is the front camera features a 50 megapixel sensor and another eight megapixel camera 
for group selfies or capturing, you know, more of your surroundings. So that's the camera's stats on paper. You know, sounds great, but what does this actually look like in action? The dynamic range is amazing. Its color reproduction is natural looking, bokeh is creamy for a phone, and in-camera software is really fun to play with. So all of these photos come straight out of the phone's cameras with no post editing. It forms pretty well in all sorts of lighting conditions, a big part thanks to the range of pro controls. So I was able to manage saturation, ISO exposure and shutter speeds. This super zoom shot came out better than I expected considering the only lighting source was the moon and I was shooting at a 125th shutter handheld. Night photography is surprisingly solid too. Or maybe it's not so surprising because the phone's main rear camera comes with the integrated Samsung's ISO cell sensor, which is a relatively large mobile camera sensor to capture more light in. The front facing 50 megapixel camera is where you'll find this phone batting above its weight as a mid ranger phone. If selfies are your thing, you're seriously going to love this phone. As for me, I don't think that I'm exactly photogenic, so Bear with me here while I test out this selfie camera for review's sake. The first thing I was really impressed with is the selfie spotlights you get on the V23 5G. I don't know how Vivo managed to fit them into the slim curved bezels, but they've integrated two LED spotlights with controllable color temperature to help control your selfie skin tone and compensate for the environment's lighting. It seriously is useful and I found myself using it quite a lot. Here's the selfie shot in portrait mode, which gives you access to some uh, pretty interesting face tune beauty features. And this one was shot with the ultra wide selfie lens and the spotlights turned on, which would work best for group shots. And then this one with the 50 megapixel selfie camera with spotlight also turned on. And I think this looks best in my opinion. Baked into the camera app itself are on the fly saturation and exposure tools to the side, auto focus locks, eye and face tracking and pro tools to control ISO aperture and you're able to shoot raw too. We could be here all day going through the camera's features, but just know that this truly is a photographer's phone on a budget. The eight megapixel wide angle rear camera and macro camera is nowhere near as impressive though. They produced a significant amount of noise in comparison. As you can see here, I found myself using the main camera most of the time for those macro shots anyway, rather than the dedicated macro camera. There are definitely better mobile cameras on the market right now, which may or may not be a fair comparison given we should be looking from a mid range perspective here. But if one thing's for sure, the V23 5G packs a lot of photography goodness for a fraction of the price, particularly when it comes to its standout front camera for the perfect selfie. Oh, and I almost forgot, this is the video capability of this phone. I'm currently recording at 4K, 30 frames per second. As you can tell, it's not too shabby, but just remember this is a photo first type mobile phone. So don't expect, you know, pro level videography here. So those are the two standout features as a mid range phone. It's unique design and it's mobile photography capability. Now, what about the other features? Well. The display is quite nice, a 6.4 inch AMOLED display that supports HDR10+. The screen is also curved for that wraparound effect, which is a nice touch at this price point. Screen brightness is, well, quite bright at 600 nits max brightness, which makes it usable in almost all scenarios except though in direct sunlight. There's a smart switch auto refresh rate to help you save power, but I personally stuck to the high performance 90 hertz refresh rate option because frankly, the battery is amazing. It holds a 4200 milliamp battery, which is definitely not the biggest battery around, but it's sizable given it's quite a slim phone. During my use over the last few weeks, it ran down to 20% battery only after two days of use, which includes web and app browsing, some cores, loads of photos, snapping, and regular YouTube videos. The very power efficient Dimensity 920 chip paired with FunTouch 12 are likely the key pieces to praise here for that long life battery. And when it does actually run out of battery, this thing is supercharged by a 44 watt flash charger 
and it's fast. A zero to 80% charge took literally quite on the mark half an hour and about a full hour for a full charge. Expect the usage time to lower significantly if you're a mobile gamer, but with regular day-to-day -day use, this phone is a marathon runner backed with a supercharger. So this phone does have its pitfalls, you know, it's not, it's not perfect and sure it isn't the most powerful mid-ranger out there in terms of pure specs, but I mean, can we really complain at the price point of only $459? I guess we could nitpick, but, and I find myself saying this a lot, I think it comes down to what you prioritize. Because if you value a phone's design and build quality along with its photography capability, well, this, this is a standout mid-ranger phone, if not one of the best bang for buck phones out on the market right now. And I don't say that lightly. I also just can't get over the back panel. The color changing glass is just, you know, amazing. I would not be surprised if more phones begin using this material on their own back panel soon enough. And in fact, they already have. If you're looking for a mid-range phone or even a secondary phone without paying thousands for another phone, the Vivo V23 5G is worth looking into. Will this phone replace my dedicated cameras like, you know, my Fuji X100V? Definitely not. But will it snap stellar shots and memories when it's the only camera on me? It definitely would in almost any lighting situation. Paired with an above average display, battery life and operating system, this is a serious contender if you're looking for a mid-range phone on a budget. And speaking of the Fuji X100V, if you're into photography, check out my full review on it on the side of the screen and feel free to critique my amateur photography. If you're curious about all my gear and tech everyday carry, I'll leave a video here on screen too so you can peep the tech that I use. Drop the code word comment super selfie if you got to the end of this video and subscribe for more tech and business videos. As always, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.